2000 through 2006 four-wheel drive Toyota Tundra lower ball joint replacement. I'm Brian Esther from How To Automotive. I'm going to walk you through the steps of replacing the lower ball joints. So this process is going to be the same for the left and right side. I'm going to show the passenger side of the vehicle. So the first step we need to do is get the vehicle up in the air and remove the front wheels. If you're doing this at home, use floor jacks and jack stands and jack it up over by the frame. You want the suspension hanging. So in this video, I get to try out the new Milwaukee M18 Fuel 2nd Generation High Torque Impact Gun. It has 1,400 foot-pounds of nut-breaking torque. It is the smallest high torque impact gun on the market, and I'm excited to show you what it can do. The impact wrench is available to the public September 2017. As soon as it's available, I will put links in the description of the video. That way, if you're interested in checking it out, you can find that there. So now we need to remove the wheels. Now that you got the wheel off, the next step is going to be is to remove the cotter pin and nut for the tie rod, outer tie rod here. So I'm going to set the impact gun in what they call reverse mode here. And what this does is uh, it allows you to take 1,400 foot-pounds of torque and, and spin the nut off. And as soon as it detects the, uh, the nut fastener broken free, it slows the RPMs down from 1,700 down to about 600 RPMs. That way your nuts, bolts, and fasteners don't go flying off. This is a pretty cool feature, especially if you're going to use like wobbly sockets when you're working on suspension and stuff. So the tool comes in at about a half inch smaller than the old version and about 250 foot-pounds more torque. To remove the tie rod, I screwed the nut back on a few threads. And what I'm going to do is take a hammer and I'm going to strike the end of the uh, spindle here and that will jar the tie rod free. So I'll take a two, three pound sledgehammer like this and give it a couple blows right on the end of it. And what that will do is it will jar the, uh, the ball joint portion of the tie rod free and it'll pop it out just like this doing it this way you won't damage the boot on the tie rod now we need to remove four bolts coming up vertical here on the ball joint so there's one here 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 and here that we need to remove i'm going to use the milwaukee uh, high torque again to remove those the bolts are 17 millimeters here in this clip you can see the bolts break free and then the RPM slow down and that's the gun doing it all by itself in the reverse mode. You could do that yourself with the trigger but this makes it easier just to pull the trigger and let the uh, tool do the work. Once you get the four bolts removed you can take the, the whole suspension here and lift upwards and kind of push it off to the side and that will free the ball joint from the actual spindle. And then what I like to do is take a, uh, a pull jack and put a couple lug nuts on the rotor here, lift the suspension up, if you look at the upper control arm is connected, and it has, it'll pivot. So I'll push the control arm up, and then I'll slide the pull jack underneath, and that creates this large gap in here so you can get in here and work and remove the ball joint. If you guys are doing this at home, you can do the same thing with the floor jack. You can put the floor jack underneath the lug nuts here, and then kind of jack it up. Now we need to remove the cotter pin and the 27 millimeter nut that's holding the ball joint onto the lower control arm. So I'll use the high torque again here to remove the 27 millimeter nut. And you can see those RPMs slow down as it uh, breaks free. Now to get the ball joint to pop out of the control arm, I'm gonna strike the end of the control arm here with a, with a two pound sledgehammer, and that'll jar the ball joint free and pop it out. So after a couple blows like that, you, it'll jar free, and then you can lift it out and set aside. So I'm going to be replacing these ball joints with TRW ball joints. They come complete with all the hardware you need, bolts and uh, cotter pins. I will link these up in the description of the video. These are the part numbers. Their left and right side are different. So when you're installing these, you need to match them up with the old ones as you take them off. Before I install them, I take a little bit of thread locker, red thread locker, and put them on the threads. This is like a little bit of glue that helps prevent these bolts from vibrating loose and coming back off. I will link this up in the description also. So after matching up the ball joints with our old one, you can go ahead and install it into the lower control arm and start the 27 millimeter nut. After starting the nut by hand, you can lift the suspension off your pull jack or floor jack and lower it back down onto the ball joint like this and then go ahead and remove the pole jack or floor jack out of your way. You may have to wiggle the suspension into place. I was lucky enough to get it to fall straight back into position 
That doesn't happen very often. Most of the time you have to work with it to get it in place. So after getting everything lined up, you can go ahead and start the bolts with the red thread locker on it and run them in until they're snug and then we're gonna torque them down with a uh, torque wrench. The bolts that come with the new kit are 19 millimeter. Once you get them snug, you can torque all four of the bolts down to 61 foot-pounds. When you're torquing the bolts down, you don't want to jerk the torque wrench. You want to ease the pressure on and that gets you an accurate torque. Once you get the four bolts torqued down, then you can go ahead and run the 27mm uh, nut in until it's snug. Then you can torque this nut down to 103 foot-pounds. And then if the cotter pin hole doesn't line up, you can torque it over just a little bit more to get all the cotter pin holes to line up in the castle nut. So once you got that torque down to 103 foot-pounds, you can go ahead and install a cotter pin. Make sure you use a new cotter pin. Now you can go ahead and install the outer tie rod back into the spindle portion here. Then you can go ahead and start the nut and run the nut down until it's snug. And to make quick work of it, I use an impact gun just to run it down until it's snug. I don't impact it down with the gun, I torque it down with a torque wrench. So you can torque this down to 45 foot-pounds. And if the cotter pin hole doesn't line up, you can torque it over just a little bit more to get it to line up. So after you get it torqued down, install the new cotter pin. After that, you're ready to reinstall the tire and torque the lug nuts down to 83 foot-pounds. And you're going to duplicate the same process for the opposite side. As soon as the impact gun is available to the public, I will link it up in the description of the video. That way you guys can check that out. I will also link up all the parts that I use in the video. So I'll have all these available in the description of the video. I'm Brian Esser from How To Automotive. I'd like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Encourage you to subscribe. Invite you to head over to the howtoautomotive.com website for more valuable videos like this. And I'd like to thank you again for watching.